Uh, I'm Johnny Davis. I head up customer experience for AppFollow. I've been at AppFollow for seven months. It feels about like seven weeks. Uh, it's been a very busy time, a very interesting time uh, to get to know the business, um, its people, its processes, uh, and try and improve those um, through the lens of customer experience. So uh, this is also what we're talking about today. <clears throat> and it's a journey. That's probably my opening statement is customer experience is a journey. Um, but we'll start with why customer experience matters. So we'll dive in right at the, the, um, at, you know, at the very, very top. I'm probably going to spend <clears throat> 15, 20 minutes just talking to you, by the way. So in terms of a definition, so I've come up with what this as a definition. So all of the steps a buyer takes uh, to get to and use the solution from the time of their realization of a need. So I need that thing to when the buyer deems that they know uh, that that need no longer exists and they become a, an ex-customer, if you will. I think you'd all agree that that's true. It's incredibly top level. But then this statement is also true as well, right? So customer experience is your customer's perception of how your company treats them. These perceptions affect behaviors and build memories and feelings that drive loyalty. That's also a very true statement. So really customer experience is the combination of these two things together. It is all of the steps the buyer takes and how the customer um, perceives your treatment of them and, and the memories and feelings that they pick up along that journey. And that's not to get too ahead of ourselves in terms of it being an emotional journey or something, but it is an emotional journey. People buy emotionally, they choose emotionally. Um, it's very true for B2C, of course, but even in a B2B environment, you still have emotional attachments to these things because often they um, impact your role, your team, um, the perception of you in that organization. Um, and I often say to my team, so I run a team of, uh, I don't know, 25 customer experience professionals across um, uh, professional services, support and customer success here at, at AppFollow. And I will say to every one of them, very few people remember what you said. But a lot of people, almost everyone will remember how you made them feel. And that's true of any conversation. That's true of this presentation now. Hopefully I'm inspiring you and motivating you. And that's the feeling you'll, you'll, you'll take on. But my words will disappear because we can't, we can't remember that much information. And we're social beings. Um, so when it comes to customer experience, the same is true. Uh, yes, it could be a conversation, but it could also be a user experience flow. It could be, uh, it could be any, any number of things. Um, you know, how you choose to respond, um, how quickly you respond, all of that stuff creates a feeling and it uh, lodges you in the mind of that of that buyer, of that potential buyer, of that potential customer. Um, anyway, these are my opinions, but that's my take on customer experience. Um, so why does customer experience matter? Again, a pretty big question. I had a look at some of our roles today. Some of you are heads of customer experience as well or heads of support team. I think we all get a sense of why customer experience matters, but I guess the real question is, why does customer experience matter most today? And I've done a bit of a, <laughs> I have a bit of a theatrical background. So I've done this as some sort of strong customer statements or potential customer statements, right? So our, expect our expectations are high and we are more connected than ever, right? The power is in that of the phone holder, of, of, of the buyer, of the individual. So be where we are and serve us like we like to be served. And by the way, you need to figure that out, right? You need to figure out where we spend our time uh, and how we like to be, uh, how we like to be served and, uh, and spoken with. You need to look after my data. I understand uh, the importance of my data, uh, the importance of privacy, but I want you to be creative with it. I expect you to connect my data and preferences to uh, offers and solutions that surprise me. Um, uh, so yes, uh, that's a really big one. And that's a hard one to crack. Surprise and delight me. So that's sort of connected to the above point or I'll go elsewhere. Um, we have a lot of choice uh, in, in today's world and really go the extra mile. And I say really because people can often say, oh, you know, we go the extra mile for our customer. Um, but you need to really do that. You need to demonstrate you do that. And we'll talk about a couple of solutions, and I'm sure our customers who are talking today will uh, will also highlight that. Be authentic and do what you say you're going to do. Again, I say to my team 
often the best way to build trust is to do the things you said you're going to do when you're going to do them. Um, but to be authentic with that, I think, is incredibly important. I think in this post-pandemic world, in fact, being human, being authentic, being relatable is so important. And that can sometimes be the reason why uh, a customer chooses you or chooses to stay with you um, or a user that is, um, you know, rather than go to the competition. Authenticity is king. The customer's king. Authenticity is uh, uh, the queen, perhaps. Um, and be consistent, please. And this is a really hard one to crack. And we're going to talk about customer experience and the maturity of customer experience within organizations. But to be consistent actually takes a lot of work um, because it means every department has to pull together in a, in a similar way uh, in order for the customer to feel like they're in a sort of connected space with, uh, with their experience. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot. Uh, it's heavy. It's pressured. Um, but if you get it right, uh, and businesses are starting to come alive to, you know, to getting it right, um, you will have a much more successful time. And our most successful brands out there are understand this and, 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 and kind of practice this, uh, this approach. So let's throw some stats at it. I'm going to put a few stats um, kind of our way today. 86% of buyers will pay more for a better customer experience. Customer experience actually outweighs product and service, or you can put product and service together and it weighs the same. It's a bit like going to a restaurant. Uh, I've been to restaurants where the food's been incredible, but guess what? The service has been terrible and uh, it makes the food taste bad. And I've, I, I, I get an emotional feeling from people, not food. Some people are different. Um, so I'll pay more or I'll remember that meal better and the value of that meal better if, uh, if I'm served one. 89% of customers say they've switched because of poor customer experience. It just shows you the importance. 88% of customers read reviews to determine the quality of a customer's uh, of a business's customer experience. Uh, very true in today's world. Reviews are everywhere. Transparency is, is everywhere. Um, obviously, mobile apps are different. And 95% of people who had a bad experience are willing to give the brand another go if they know that their issue's been dealt with correctly. And this is a really important point. Again, you'll hear about this today, but it's not about being perfect. It's about being consistent. It's about following up. And if something isn't perfect or is broken, maybe it's a product, maybe it's a bug, maybe it's a feature that's missing. Um, as long as once that thing arrives or that feedback's been um, you know, heard, reconnect, close the loop. Um, that's how we build trust. So what metrics does customer experience influence? The punchline here is pretty much everything. Um, if, if, you, uh, if, you, if you set it at the sort of business level, um, obviously product retention uh, from a customer perspective in terms of success, we want to be driving down churn, increasing growth, uh, improving customer satisfaction metrics. Um, the cost of acquisition should improve uh, as we get better referrals and um, a certain amount of gravity around the brand. And average order values are are kind of set to increase as well. You'll notice some names of departments in the inner of this wheel. Um, and that's because really customer experience is not something that sits with me here at AppFollow, uh, and nor does it sit with any of you. It really needs to be a company-wide initiative um, because it's something that we all have a responsibility to create and maintain. So whether you're a founder or a uh, you know, you know someone in finance who's, who's kind of generating and chasing payments or somebody on the support team, anyone that interacts with a customer really or, or kind of sets that tone and that culture is responsible. And of course, revenue is the big, hairy, lagging indicator behind this whole game. Uh, we don't just do customer experience because we want to be nice, although it helps <laughs> because we want to be authentic, but these things should lead to better, you know, better retention of revenue better growth of existing customers uh, and ultimately um, more reasons for new customers to come to you in the first place. Um, so yeah, uh, but we'll come to metrics uh, shortly. Um, I wanted to show this Qualtrics um, study that was done around customer experience competency and, and maturity. So they looked at a number of, of, of large organizations uh, as a sort of proxy for, 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 for how we are. And it asked them, where are you on this maturity scale? I'll talk a bit more about the maturity scale shortly. I also need to speed up because it's already quite past the hour. Um, 
a, a whopping 54% of businesses said, do you know what? We haven't really got a strategy. We're just exploring it right now. 25% were saying, yeah, we're starting to do a few things here and there. Uh, and 1% said that they had a truly embedded customer experience um, program or your kind of culture, if you like. So it shows that there, that there is a huge gap um, uh, within business, but that's good. It's nice that there is a gap. It means we have things we can do, things we can improve upon. So in terms of customer experience in mobile, just to take uh, the, the wide view of, of kind of why to invest, um, you know, when it comes to those, um, uh, you know, those businesses kind of um, considering mobile solutions. So 46% of the population has a smartphone. Um, that's absolutely huge. Global app market saw a incredible uh, amount of growth. Uh, so this is a big, huge area uh, of investment. 82% of companies have seen impressive return on investment um, from investing in apps um, in, in the first place. 82% of customers turn to mobile to help make a product decision. Uh, I, I'm almost certain that's probably higher. Uh, when developers respond to more than 100,000 reviews, their app rating changes by 0.7%. Um, stars on average so what we're looking at there is um, you know kind of reply rate uh, again we're not just um, automating and, and handling replies because it feels good to to connect quickly and as in the moment as we can um, these things have a genuine impact on um, um, people's um, you know kind of willingness to rate you and apps with a rating below four lose more than half of their potential downloads. Uh, and that's that's absolutely huge and goes back to the fact that people, um, uh, you know, will read reviews and that will be based, you know, kind of strongly on their on their on their buying uh, uh, decision. Um, and then in terms of. Uh, uh, Kind of customer experience at the at maybe the higher level customers with the strongest omni-channel customer engagement enjoy a 10 percent year on year growth and a 10 percent increase in average order value as well as a 25 increase in close rates so being where your customer is um, is of critical importance um, we are exploring that here at app follow i wouldn't say we've nailed our omni-channel strategy honestly um, but it is something that is down the line for us uh, and i'll talk about maturity uh, priority shortly um 63 of smartphone users would rather buy from companies with a mobile optimized customer experience of course they would 84 percent of customers use digital channels more frequently than in 2019 so a great reliance on mobile apps and smartphones and over 90 percent of customers using smart mobile apps are using them as a customer experience channel um so yeah, you know, they expect to be serviced, uh, you know, kind of within this way, within this portal. So how to know if you're doing customer experience right? Um, really, uh, right is a difficult thing. It's highly subjective. Every business is different. And what I would probably say is it's really good to know, firstly, where are you as a business when it comes to customer experience? Are you investigating? That is, we're not focused on CX as a strategic opportunity, but we're exploring um, how this could work for us and the areas of highest impact or are you starting to initiate certain things um, certain programs certain initiatives uh, that help um, uh, kind of land uh, you know the basics of customer experience um, you're then into mobilization stage where executives view customer experience as a strategic priority um, uh, uh, the organization taps into full-time staff who distribute insights and drive. And this is probably where we're at, at follow, honestly, or certainly where I'm trying to get us to um, scaling then from there. So strong competencies in place, organization systematically uses insights. It's just part of their, uh, of their culture and embedded is uh, yeah. Skills ingrained across the organization. Everyone understands the power of the customer. Uh, and why experience is, is, is important. And, and they use these insights on a daily basis. However, that being said, I would just say there are four things to do uh, fundamentally uh, in order to underpin your customer experience program uh, as you get into like how to move from one to two, basically on this maturity. So one is to listen to your target audience, understand their needs and expectations, um, of you and your uh, of your products and services address and engage customer queries in real time uh, as best you can 
Uh, obviously, AppFollow can help with all of these things. Focus on building a customer-centric culture. This is huge. And really, unfortunately, this has to come from top down. Thankfully, the founders at AppFollow understand the importance of this, and they brought me here. Um, but if it's not coming top down, it's incredibly hard, I would say, to try and do this um, the, um, the other way around. And maybe you need to look for some opportunities to put customer experience more on the map in your business. And that's where you can measure um, you know, kind of customer satisfaction metrics, any revenue metrics, um, any negative metrics actually that come through that indicate why uh, having more of a focus on customer experience is a good thing. Cool. I'm going to speed up. Um, I think I've got just four more minutes. Um, so I just wanted to give, I know we've got a load of customers on this call. So again, thank you for being here. I wanted to give you a quick update from AppFollow. Uh, and of course, to any uh, potential customers, hello to you as well. So as you know, we're a leading app experience platform that empowers mobile teams to unlock the needs of their customers and make winning strategic decisions based on powerful insights um, derived um, across the app stores. That's where we are today. Uh, the exciting update for you is we've released um, some new packages uh, and plans um, that are um, under these three categories of, of, of usage around the jobs to be done, that is to, um, um, to monitor, to engage, and to accelerate um, your app growth potential. Um, I'm really, really excited about these packages. Uh, we've been developing them for a little while. They are much more based around the jobs to be done within your business, within your team. They're much easier, I think, to understand, to conceptualize, uh, to get investment for as well. I think they're just much more um, easily understood. Uh, uh, so, uh, yes, we're really excited to be talking to you about these uh, about these packages um, in the future. Uh, if you're an existing customer with us, uh, you're either having these conversations with us now um, or you're soon to be uh, kind of hearing from us um, as to what these packages entail. So just to give a super quick overview of each one, monitor. Um, this is where we give you the tools to um, discover the areas for improvement. Uh, really, this is about listening to your um, uh, to, to your feedback for, from your customers, being able to categorize these uh, these insights, um, tag these insights up, and obviously report on those, but importantly, act upon those. But also insights from your competitors too, so you can see exactly what they're doing uh, and benchmark yourself accordingly. We then move to engage. So then, how do we uh, take the next steps in um, sort of amplifying and improving our engagement and um, review management strategy. There's a whole host of super powerful tools uh, and, as well as a, uh, a powerful automation engine uh, to help you get in and uh, get that real time or if nil to real time, uh, you know, kind of response metric up, uh, imp um, improve your reply effect uh, and get that customer experience really humming within your organization. And finally, accelerate. So how can we harness valuable market intel uh, for better targeted messaging, for better organic reach, uh, obviously handling reviews um, kind of promptly and, and, and effectively helps organic reach. Um, but we can really help you, you know, analyze your app's performance. Uh, we can index that against your store, you know, kind of by your category uh, and really help you um, get seen um, by more users, uh, get adopted by more users um, and improve your user retention too. Uh, so, yes, more on that. Anyway, I am one minute. I'm bang on time. This never happens. Um, but yes, I guess welcome again formally to um, our seminar today, Customer Experience in a Mobile First World. Um, I've just been talking to you about my feelings around customer experience. Hopefully there were some um, interesting points there. But the main event really uh, is our agenda uh, now. Um, so here's um, who we're going to be hearing from. Um, we're going to be um, hearing from Grinder next. Oh, I am overdue by five minutes, it seems. I got my timings wrong. So I'm going to be handing over to, uh, to Yap Gerritsen, our head of product um, here at AppFollow, um, and Jeff King, who's community advocate at Grindr. Um, I'm going to be talking to uh, our friends over at Exodus after that. Then we're going to be talking to Gameloft about uh, establishing a flawless customer uh, experience uh, department. And then finally, uh, we're Changarin, um, G5 uh, on creating and leveraging a 360 uh, degree perspective for growth.